I've made videos in the past talking about the importance of backing up your files, specifically getting a hard drive in a RAID 1 configuration. I've actually recommended this hard drive right here. There's two disks inside of here and you can set it up as a RAID 1 array so that whatever is written to one drive gets written to the other one automatically so that if any disk were to ever fail, you'd have the other one as a backup. Obviously, it's one unit, so if the house burnt down or it, the whole thing blew up, you would lose all your files. But at least if one disk were to fail, you'd have them on the other one and you could get them back. At least that's what's supposed to happen. But specifically with these Western Digital MyBook Duos and potentially with other RAID 1 uh, drives, you wanna make sure you don't do what I did. I made a very uh, bad mistake, I would say. So I've bought maybe about 10 of these for work and they've all worked incredibly well. We have client projects on them. They've worked great and that's why I've kept buying more of them. And you can actually get these up to 16 terabytes now. And if you put that in a RAID 1, that's eight terabytes uh, space that you have available. Well, I bought some of these for personal use as well. This is what I use for all my YouTube uh, videos. So this is uh, on one of these drives back there. That's to say it was working well until one of them suddenly disappeared off my desktop. I was using one of these RAID drives. Normally it was, it was a newer drive I had just gotten, had it for like a month or two, was using it no problems, and then one day I go to my computer and it's unmounted, it's gone, it's not there on the desktop, the operating system cannot see it. Now I'm on a Mac, so I'm using the Mac OS, go into disk utility, it's not there, nothing can be seen. The drive was not dropped, uh, nothing happened to it, to my knowledge, it was just sitting on the desk, minding its own business, no damage whatsoever, but suddenly it's just gone. So I think, well, maybe one of the drives has failed, so I need to kind of use that RAID setup to get my files back. However, everything I do, I cannot access the files. I try one disk, I try the other disk, I do some uh, drive checks with the software that Western Digital supplies with the drive itself. There's some kind of checking that you can do to make sure everything's in good working condition. It said it wasn't, you know, it was like kind of failing the test that I was running on it, but it didn't tell me what was wrong. It didn't tell me how to fix it. It just, for some reason, it was broken uh, one day, even though it was working great the day before, and I had no idea what had happened. So I go to Google. I start doing a little bit of research, trying to figure out what's happened. Very, very difficult, especially in like a niche field where, you know, it's not a common consumer device. You know, most people, your average user is not uh, doing any kind of RAID setup. And there are so many different types of hard drives out there that this is a very specific problem. And so it was very difficult tracking down a solution. In fact, I didn't even find a solution online. So that gives me the other option of calling up Western Digital and going through their phone tech support. Well, of course, they're no help because if you're familiar with any kind of tech support, it takes a long time to get to the right person. And it can be very challenging having to repeat your story over and over and over again. And even then people don't really understand what's happened. So for you to understand, hopefully you can follow what I did. First of all, I tested the disks inside. They were still spinning, there was no clicking, no obvious signs of disk failure. Disks seemed to be in good working order, but still no files. The one thing I did find on Google doing some research was that the enclosure on these can fail as well because you have two disks inside, but you also have the enclosure and kind of the circuit board inside that runs the RAID setup and kind of manages the data and lets you, it's, it's the RAID control controller and that can fail as well and that's what I thought had happened so the ob obvious solution would be to replace the enclosure and because I have like a 10 or 11 or 12 of these laying around I put the discs in another enclosure thinking that this enclosure had failed and I put it in the other enclosure still no luck nothing worked I also back there have a standard like hard drive dock where you can just put a hard drive the actual disc uh, one of these that's inside, you can pop one of those out, put it in the dock, and read it on the computer. Still no luck. No matter what I did, I could not get access to the files. Now, this was a newer drive, and like I said, it was for personal use, so the footage and, and stuff that was on there was not extremely important. Still valuable, obviously, but it would have been much worse if it was a client project or an actual professional thing that I had done rather than just some YouTube videos. I I ended up losing some thumbnails for some of my videos and I couldn't uh, recreate them because obviously the footage was gone. And anyway, that's a whole separate story. So there's a series of my uh, videos that have weird looking thumbnails. If you're wondering why that happened, that's exactly why, because 
I didn't have the thumbnails anymore. They were deleted. So uh, everything I do, every experiment, every test I run, every Google search I do turns up nothing. I reach out to Western Digital on Twitter. I send them an email to their tech support. I call them. Um, I get in touch with Amazon, which is where I bought this drive. Amazon was extremely helpful. They basically were like, well, we can't fix it, but we can send you a new one if you send that one back. So that was really awesome that I was able to get a replacement drive for no cost, um, which is great, but still my files are gone. And what really concerned me about this was, yeah, I lost some personal stuff that I didn't really care about that much, but what if the same problem happened to one of the work drives, something that a client has their footage on one of these drives? Now I'm freaking out because there's like 10 of these all with client stuff on it. And I'm like, if this same problem happens to one, let alone maybe even all of them, how am I going to recover it? Because there seems to be no solution. I even have uh, some recovery software called Disk Drill. There's a bunch of different options out there for you know hard drive recovery software. Uh, that's the one I have. I even have the pro version. You know, I've paid for it at one point and I ran that on the disks. Still no luck, no files, no data. So what went wrong? How did this happen? Was it an enclosure failure? Was it a disk failure? Well, the part of the story that I had forgotten about that I did differently, because I said I had 10 of these and I did something different with this drive when I first got it. All the other drives I formatted as HFS plus J, which is kind of the Mac journaled format for the RAID 1 array. In the software that's supplied with these drives, you can format as HFS plus J, or you can also format as XFAT. And I thought I would try out XFAT because XFAT is compatible with both Mac and Windows. And I thought, you know, if I ever get a Windows PC, I wanna make sure I can use the hard drive on it. I don't wanna be stuck in a Mac format having to buy another hard drive, copy stuff over to that XFAT version. So I'll just, I'll, I'll make it XFAT and that'll be okay. Well, I didn't really think of that uh, as being a problem because it was an option in the software. And so, and it, and it worked just fine for a month or two, but then something else happened. We got another drive like this at work and you know we thought oh well let's just do it as xfat so we do it as xfat and it's not visible on the network so these two pieces of information the fact that it wasn't visible on our local network the work drive and then my personal one just disappearing from the computer altogether hmm two uh, places where a drive was magically invisible with no real solution well this got me thinking, perhaps it's an issue with XFAT. And sure enough, when I start searching for that specific, you know, RAID 1 XFAT, you start finding information that says that XFAT is not as reliable as the journal versions. Uh, yes, it's cross compatible and yes, it's got no problem on Windows, but you know, some, some people have said that if you lose power or you pull the USB without ejecting, that you can actually corrupt the system architecture. And I don't know how much of that is true, but I'm, I'm pretty sure it was an issue with XFAT because when I took this drive, I basically cut my losses. There was, there was no help. There was nothing I could do. Recovery software wasn't working. I even called local, you know, data recovery specialists and they were like, it's $250 for an evaluation. I'm like, it's not worth $250 to just evaluate the drive and see if they can even do anything with it. I really exhausted all of my resources. And I, I basically just said, I'm gonna reformat the drive and see if I can get the disks and the enclosure back up and running. And that's exactly what I did. I reformatted, but this time I did it as HFS plus J. And what do you know? It works again. The disks are good, the enclosure's good. Everything works just fine. So, was it an issue with XFAT? I'm, I'm really uh, suspicious of it, of it. That was the culprit of the, uh, that was the key problem. The common denominator in all of these situations was the XFAT format. And now the drive works great. All the other drives have been no problem over the years. In fact, I even took uh, some of those drives and I was like, you know, what if one of these were to fail? Could I take the disks out? Because people were saying online that if the enclosure fails on one of these MyBook Duos, specifically the MyBook Duo, people were saying that there's some kind of encryption on there. So if the enclosure fails, you can't read the drives uh, when you they're, they're taken out. You're basically uh, out of luck. And that made like no sense to me, but it seemed to be exactly what I was experiencing. I took the drives out. I couldn't read them on any other uh, uh, enclosure, and that's why I was assuming that the enclosure had failed. So I tested it with the HFS plus J, the Mac formatted ones, and I popped some disks out of one of those enclosures and put them in another enclosure, and I could read it just fine. I could read a single disk, I could read both disks. So, uh, you know, these work 
uh, the way they're supposed to. Uh, if, if it fails, you can get the data back. If a disk, you know, if one disk dies, you can take the other one out, read it. Some, if the enclosure dies, you can put it in another enclosure. So everything in terms of data protection is working, but there's an issue with XFAT. So if you have one of these MyBook Duos, which I still do recommend, I actually really like them because uh, believe it or not, buying it in this setup uh, with the enclosure, with the two drives is actually cheaper than buying uh, these drives individually and kind of building your own. So you can save a little bit of money if you buy one of these. There are other ways, there are you know better drives, better enclosures that offer more features. But for my purposes, I, I actually really like these. They're really affordable and you can get a ton of storage space out of it. You know, Like I said, up to eight terabytes currently. And I really like the fact that there is, you know, power and USB on the back for mounting the, the RAID, but then it also has two extra USB ports. So you can, uh, you know, put more hard drives through there. You can power other devices, whatever you need. So you, you don't lose ports. Uh, you actually gain an extra port by using one of these. So uh, I do still recommend them, but if you're going to use one of these specifically on a Mac, I can't attest to what it's like on Windows. Um, I assume it's a little bit better, but if you're going to use one of these on a Mac, do not do XFAT, even though theoretically it should be compatible and there shouldn't be any problems. Hopefully the story has given you insight that you may actually run into problems. And unfortunately, I never figured out a way to get the data back off the hard drive. So if I had done this, you know, XFAT format on a client drive and lost eight terabytes of footage, like, oh my gosh, like, you know, how... Like, I, I don't even think I have to explain how, how bad of a situation that would be, because it would be really, really bad. Thankfully, it was just a personal thing, but that's why it's really important that you do personal work uh, along with professional client stuff, because there are so many things that I've learned shooting uh, personal projects, both from a filming uh, production standpoint and a post-production standpoint. You learn stuff like this. You can test things out personally before you commit to a professional project doing the same route, and you can kind of troubleshoot things before it becomes a problem for a client. It's always better to have the problem yourself than have to explain the problem to a client because then you don't look like a professional, you look like an amateur and you definitely don't want that. So if you are gonna do one of these with a Mac, don't use XFAT, I would say stay away from it. Even though it's an option in the software, don't use it. I, I don't think a lot of people do. I think most people who are on Mac use the Mac format. I mean, that's what I have been doing for years. And that's why I assume this isn't a real common problem. But if you have that idea like I did of like, oh, XFAT is cross compatible, stay away, don't do it. And it, it you know what, and it may even apply to other RAID enclosures on Mac. I, I, I would be very curious if other people have formatted RAID 1s uh, with the XFAT format and use them successfully on a Mac without issue. If that is the case, please leave a comment. Correct me if I'm wrong on any of this information. Basically, I'm going off of what I figured out and what I deduced on my own because the internet was not really that helpful in this regard and tech support and all the people I've reached out to have not been able to help me or educate me. And I'm not, you know, a systems uh, engineer. I'm, I'm not familiar with the internal architecture of hard drive and all the different formats. I'm a, a pro user, but still more casual. So these are, are my kind of assumptions and my deductions based on the experience that I've gone through. But like I said, this could apply to other RAID 1 enclosures, you know, so it might not even be specific to the MyBook Duos. It, it could just be a problem with RAID 1 and XFAT on Mac in general. But uh, I, I do need to do more research, but I wanted to tip you guys off to this in case you do end up buying one of these since I've recommended them in the past because I do really like them. I didn't want you to buy one thinking they were great, format as XFAT and then go, Where's all my footage? You you screwed me. Make sure that you're really familiar with the system uh, that's in place. Do test after test after test because it's really important. You know, even if you have a RAID set up like this, you know, this could get stolen. It could blow up. There could be a fire. So you should also think about having another one offsite at another location as a proper backup because a RAID one, yes, it's a mirrored version, but if you know something gets corrupted on one drive, that can transfer to the other. If a file gets deleted on one drive, it'll get deleted on the other. They're just a mirror of one another in a RAID 1 setup. So it's not the the safest uh, way to do it. You know, they're, they're, it's, it's much better to have 
uh, one of, one of these that's rated in case one of the discs fail, but then also something offsite as another full clone backup as well in case something were to happen to this drive. It gets more expensive the more safety barriers you put in place. So obviously you have to figure out what's gonna work with your budget and what your needs are for the project. But really when it comes to data protection, you wanna be as safe as possible. So that's why I thought I'd make this video, tipping you off to it. Hopefully that all made sense. If you have any questions, you can always ask me a comment. And if I messed anything up, please correct me in the comments below and I can either uh, you know, fix it in the description or make a follow-up video if I have to. But I think everything I've shared has been accurate to the best of my knowledge. Uh, it has not been a fun process trying to get this fixed and you know, I, I actually didn't get it fixed, but at least I figured out what the problem was and that's for me, the most important part. So I know what caused it so it doesn't happen again. Still recommend these. Uh, definitely a good RAID setup if you're looking for something like that.